Hi guys, well after a bit of a break today we are back at it again. I'm going to be checking out a pretty exciting GPU. So this here is the ASUS ROG Strix LC RX 6800 XT. And I don't think it's going to take you too long to work out what that LC stands for. Yes, this is a liquid cooled graphics card and it comes with a very unique looking shroud. Strix LC ditches the conventional way to cool the GPU and instead it adopts a closed loop configuration which also comes with some snazzy ARGB fans. Although the card itself is quite large, it can be regarded as a low profile solution and with that comes a sleek and refined aesthetic. Now even in 2021 we're still experiencing stock issues with graphics cards on both sides of the aisle. And you know, as such, pricing can change, it can fluctuate. So please take these figures that I'm about to give you in a tentative type of fashion. So it should be available for just over the $1,000 in the US, $950 in the UK, and $1,800 in Australia. And so you know, that is a fair chunk of cash, and of course, it's all gonna depend anyway on if you can find the stock. However, we're gonna check out this card in plenty of detail, see what it's all about, and see if it's worth considering. Alrighty, well here is our liquid cooled Strix Edition 6800 XT. And the first and immediate thing is that from that name and the cooling apparatus, we're left in no doubt that this card here uses a closed loop for its thermal design. And so yeah, it is quite a bit different from your typical XT or any other GPU for that matter. Now I want to cover the cooling system in more detail later on when we remove the shroud. But you can see here that we've got a 240mm radiator with a pump which is responsible for the GPU cooling, while the onboard fan focuses purely on those minor components. I really love the styling on this card, although quite a bit bigger. It is reminiscent though of the 8800 GT from many years back. We have a masterfully crafted shroud, which although plastic, does convey a level of decadence that you come to expect from the top of the line offering from the ROG team. It combines a variety of different textures, and the area closest to the output panel there has been decked out with ARGB lighting, which definitely adds appeal. We should also say that the fans on the radiator are also ARGB, and those can be customized using the AuraSync software. Software. Now this is quite a large graphics card, but the shape of it is quite a bit different to what you typically see. And so if you're wanting to know if it's going to fit inside your case, then listen up, because here are the dimensions. The length is 277mm, for the width it is 130mm, and then the height is 43mm. You may well have to factor in the tubes coming out of this card, but it shouldn't present too many issues regardless of the orientation that you make use of. Now this card comes with a factory overclock, and you'd expect nothing less from the ROG team, and the mere fact that we're dabbling with a liquid cooled unit. And so the GPU clock boot is set at 2360 MHz. Now this is up from the reference frequency of 2250. So that is quite significant and it marks it out as one of the fastest XTs on the market. Sadly though, the memory clock sits at the reference settings of 16 gigabits. And that comes in the form of 16 gig of GDDR6. Strix LC is a PCI Express 4 card. It comes in there with 4608 shader units, has the DirectX 12 Ultimate support, along with Vulkan 1.2 and OpenGL 4.6. Now in terms of both your computer case and your motherboard, this card is a double slotter thanks to that lower profile shroud. And on the back panel we've got the two DisplayPort 1.4s, those can give you the 8K at 60, one HDMI 2.1 port, that 2.1 allows you to tap into 4K at 120 and 8K at 60, and a single Type-C port. And so not a lot to choose from there, but it is interesting there to see Type-C being included, it's not usually featured on the XT. Now this GPU obviously has quite a lot going on in terms of that additional radiator for the cooling system and the shift in the GPU clock boost, and therefore we need a 750 watt power supply, and from it we're going to need to use two 8 pin connections. And those connectors use power indicators, which are going to let you know if power isn't properly being delivered. Turning to the back of the card, we have a metal backplate which gives that protection, and it also helps to maintain some firmness for that weight distribution. On the back section you can see that we've got this dual BIOS which gives us two modes, one is for quiet mode, giving you that better control over noise, while the OC mode will shift that card up to its fastest setting and have that fan curve adjusted respectively. Towards the end of the card we also get these two PWM fan headers. This isn't something new, we've seen it on previous Strix cards. It allows us to synchronize the cooling with a nearby fan. This is handy if the card you know, needs that supplementary cooling due to the temperatures hitting a certain figure. It is also handy if you've run out of headers on your motherboard. Okay, so we've taken our Strix LC apart and this is what we're presented with. And so first of all, 
all, we've got the radiator, which is a 240mm unit with two 120mm ARGB fans attached, which are configured for radiator usage. Now, those fans on the onboard fan use zero decibel technology, and so when the system is idle, they're going to stop spinning. That radiator is pre filled and it requires no extra work or maintenance, it is just plug and play. And so, the pump which is attached to this closed loop is the primary source for the thermal control, it connects to the GPU itself. ROG has given the Strix LC a large copper cold plate which covers the GPU and the surrounding VRAM. And then we have the blower design which is what we could term onboard. This has a low profile heatsink for the minor components and the circuitry which also features a slow spinning fan. And the back plate also has thermal pads which sit over the VRAM for additional cooling. And this design works very well as you can imagine. If you stick around to the end of the video we'll see how it performs. Having all of this detached means we can also get a good view of the design of this board. And you can see it's quite a tall PCB. So this Strix LC here uses a huge 17 phase power delivery system along with the components inside the Super Alloy Power 2 feature set which we see on all of ROG's top of the line boards. And the beating heart for Strix LC is of course the Navi 21 XT GPU which adopts the RDNA architecture. Now based on the spec of this GPU, the memory and the shaders, this here is going to be ideal for those of you gaming at 1440p and 4k. And so with our breakdown of the card now complete, let's check out the performance of this XT against its closest rival, the RTX 3080, by way of this Aura's RTX 3080 Master. Now we're not just going to overlay some graphs and stick on some music, instead we're going to show you actual side-by-side -side performance so you guys can get a good idea of what to expect. And if you do want more benchmarks, different games and resolutions, check out that web review in the description. For this test we're going to go with 4K and the maximum detail preset in each game, and for Battlefield we're going to enable that ray tracing. We'll be using the latest drivers from both parties, along with a game catcher card to avoid any frame rate interference. We'll also have GPUs that are running in the background to pick up on the max temperature results, and the result for that will come at the end. Again, if we just come out of our last game, let's see the max temperature results. And there we go. Alrighty, well that is the Strix LC 6800 XT, vastly different to your traditional graphics card in the sense of the thermal design, and therefore that changes the overall look as well. And I must say, I've got a bit of a soft spot for the styling on this particular card. You know, the textures, the shapes, uh, the finish, it just looks so stylish and if you've got this vertically mounted in your case with that front side on display then it's going to look stunning. Now on the installation side of things, if you do already have a closed loop for your CPU then there may well be a few issues getting that radiator, this whole configuration, into your case. 
The most obvious space, the spot to, to go into is the front of your case to install it, but that could possibly have a negative impact on your case airflow. These are just a few things that you might want to consider. Now, as far as the 3080 goes against the XT, the better card really boils down to uh, you know, which titles you play, the cost, and of course the availability at the moment, that could well be a decider. But as you've just seen in the benchmarks that we've just run, uh, we can vouch for this card being excellent in 1440p, 4K, and being able to max out on those detailed presets. Cooling is StrixLC's forte, and that won't come as any surprise. You know, the inclusion of a closed loop and designated thermal control for the GPU and then the other components yields great results. In our tests, we saw the card hit the mid 50s in game, and that is just an outstanding result. The only thing to watch out for is the introduction of noise from the radiator fans. The pump itself is fairly quiet, but the fans ramp right up into the thousands as far as the RPM goes. Now this card is listed as one of the most expensive XTs but it is a bit of a collector's item due to the fact that it uses liquid and so it has those extra features which may or may not matter to some people you know if you aren't too concerned and you're not too bothered about um, doing a manual overclock on the card or having temperatures that exceed 60 degrees then another model in the XT lineup will perform just as well and it's probably going to cost you considerably less. However, based on our findings today, we're going to recommend this card based purely on the visuals and just how exciting this release is. You know, it's fast, it looks great, and it offers the lowest GPU temps that you're probably going to see. The GPU availability fiasco at the moment seems to be continuing, doesn't it, into the new year, into 2021, which is unfortunate. I know some of you have managed to snag a card as that stock trickles in. Have you managed to you know, get yourself a new GPU? or do you have plans to pick up a new GPU for an upgrade? Let's start some discussion in the comment section below. We'd also love to hear your opinions on this particular card today that we've been taking a look at. What do you think of it uh, in terms of the way it looks, the way it performs? For the web review of Strix LC with a completely different set of game benchmarks, different resolutions with comparison to other cards, then click on that review link which will be on the screen in the description very soon guys a huge thanks to you guys for watching today really do appreciate it take care and i'll see you guys in the next one